So ABC ran this story about this guy named Richard who went out for milk one night back in 1993 and decided, Welp, there's about as good as time as any to leave the old family. So he called his wife and said he was going to the hospital sick, and when she called over to the hospital, there was absolutely no trace of her husband. Essentially, he absolutely ghosted these poor people he was calling his family. I guess that's one way not to pay child support. <laughs> Wanna get away looking ass? <laughs> because his sons were only 9 and 6 at the time, so this was a pretty big decision this dude kinda just made on the fly. He didn't even take his passport or toothbrush or anything like that. He was really just trying to get the fuck up out Indiana. What did you love about him? Um, he was a lot of fun to be with. She said, Rick's God. I said, God, where'd he go? They found his car abandoned at the airport. They said no one with his name had ever traveled on the airline. And that was pretty much it. Richie was gone to never return to his family again. One day your dad was there, the next day... Gone. Gone. I thought... You know, initially you think, oh, okay, this will this won't last too long. He'll be back. But still, the next summer he sent his sons a birthday card along with fifty dollars. Maybe sometime soon we will get to see each other. I bet I won't even know you. It has been so long. Mind your mother. Bye. Those words, the last they ever heard from Dad. Jesus, Hallmark really needs to start thinking about adding this one to their holiday section for all the deadbeat dads out there. His family lost absolutely everything after he left. The house, their fancy cars, they were no longer able to go on extravagant vacations like they were used to. Basically, they had to be the same as everyone else. Aww. Big Bird over here was raging because her daughter got dropped like a bad habit. She's our daughter. And I'm a parent. And I'm a parent. And I had to help her. And after 10 years of Richard not being around, the state finally declared him deceased after his family was forced to move on with their lives without a father and husband. Her kids even suspected that she might have something to do with his disappearance, and a lot of people questioned her innocence. That was until a private detective dug up some information like a girlfriend checking some old Twitter favorites. And 23 years later, this son of a bitch was found. No, not that son of a bitch, you idiot. This son of a bitch. Tall glad to hear that he was still alive. I don't remember that feeling. Oh, you know this lady was seeing red. She probably wanted to be the one to kill this motherfucker Richie Rich once and for all. They got the guy arrested. He came back from the dead to haunt her soul. And in case you're wondering, he wasn't some hitman for the last 23 years. Or he didn't enter the witness protection program for witnessing some crazy crime or anything like that. This kind of turned into a fishy story because the dude was literally hiding out in Florida under a stolen identity of a dead fisherman. I gotta say, at this point, this sounds like a plot to a great fucking movie. Richard Hoagland was pretending to be a dead fisherman. Terry Szymanski killed in a freak boating accident in 1991. It was like, catch me if you can, not quite as glamorous. And so you're probably wondering how the guy did it. Well, he escaped to Florida and managed to steal this man named Terry Szymanski's identity after obtaining his death certificate. From there, he managed to get a birth certificate, which made him eligible to get a driver's license. And after that, he was pretty much all set. He bought a house, remarried another woman, and this motherfucker even had another son. Everyone trying to wrap their heads around how someone can disappear, live alive for 23 years, and get away with it. He owns multiple homes, multiple mortgages, cars. He got married, had a child, has a pilot's license, owns a plane. It's that easy. This was some time ago. Is it not that easy anymore? I would hope not. And he had absolutely everybody tricked. Even his new family knew nothing about his false identity or his past life. To them, he was Terry Szymanski, amazing father, amazing lover, and an even better fisherman. When his new wife would ask him questions about his past, this man was just an absolute beast at lying apparently, because his high and out skills were matching that of Bin Laden. But I think we got him, coach! He was a landlord and we talked to some of the tenants there and they just said he was a, a, a good landlord, nice guy, and nobody had anything unusual to say about him. Nice guy, who would have thought? I would have never guessed it was him. So this dude didn't get caught up for a whole 23 years. That is until the real Terry Szymanski's nephew was looking for him on one of those ancestry sites and discovered that his dead uncle had apparently gotten married four years after they had put him six feet in the dirt. Hmm. 
Something doesn't seem to add up here. Inspector Gadget shows up to his Florida residence the next day with the death certificate of the real Terry, and he dropped an absolute bomb on Richie's life, because this guy will now be locked up for many years for identity theft, and when he was questioned about why he left his original family, he really just blames it on relationship issues with his ex-wife. It's kind of ironic because now he has to leave his new family and his new kid behind once again. What a fucking loser. I believe that he got caught up with the wrong people. Got carried away and over his head and something. I mean, I wonder if that's because that's a better thing for you to believe than he actually just left you all. No. Damn, man, why do you have to do the sun like that? His pops had already left him and the reporter's just rubbing it in like packing salt into a dirty wound. But don't worry, kids, because Big Bird gets the last laugh today. So, he's in a bad place. Yes. He can't stand to be confined in any one place and now he can't go anywhere. It just kind of tickles me a little bit. Oh, it tickles me too, Grandma. This guy Richard is just an absolute tool for leaving his family, and I hope he gets absolutely what he deserves in prison if you know what I mean. It's not right for anyone to leave their kids like this, and overall this guy is just kind of the ultimate deadbeat dad. I have this ring. This is my dad's ring. That's it. I do wear it for the most part every day, but I think I wear it to remind me of a bad example. It's amazing that back in the day, you could really just get a second chance at life like this by stealing someone's identity. He got this death certificate so easy, he turned it into a birth certificate, turned it into a license, and now this man was just, you know, living like the Sims in a whole new life. But what do you guys think? You know, what would you think if you were this kid? I think I'd go over there, I'd take this dad's ring, and I'd punch him in the face. I want to thank you guys for watching the video. I got a lot more fire coming soon, so hope you're ready for that. Please drop a big like and subscribe today. As always, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Stepped about the Gucci store with the tar bag Feeling like a tall glass of water, fuck the hostess though Looking at me all cheaply And I ain't even looking for the price tag or my receipt Bitch, you got me fucked up, but let me digress You read the transcript, it's more readers digest than poems really They say Poseidon, it's more Noah really A Joe or Kim when triple double him was going silly Gotta face the facts with this, I'm multifaceted From the Atlantic to the Pacific, you catch me everything but